In this section, we introduce inverse transformation, which is a means of finding the value of x given the value of z, as you can see right here. Now, in a way, this is uh, the flip side of what we learned earlier. Earlier, we learned about the normal transformation whereby given mean and sigma and x, we were able to calculate z, and then with this z, we found probabilities for x. But in this case, we're going to do the opposite. All right, so we're going to find a way of calculating the value of x given the value of z. And of course, we also would have, would have been given the mean and the standard deviation. So if you look carefully right here, you will see that this formula for, cal for calculating inverse transform, for performing inverse transformation is, is derived from this, from the z statistic. So if you solve for x, you're going to get this result right here. On purpose, we define it as mu plus or minus z sigma because x could be on the upper side or on the lower side. If it's on the right side of the mean, then it's going to be the mean plus z sigma because it's telling us that we are above the mean. If on the other hand, x is on the left side of the mean, then it's going to be the mean minus z sigma because we know we're, we are below the mean. But as you would imagine, before we can have z in order to plug it in here and then find the value of x, we need to first of all know the probability, meaning the area under the normal curve that we need to work with. Given that area, we, we then find z and then armed with this z, we plug it in here and we solve for x. So that's the logical stepwise process. So once again, the value of x could be below the mean, in which case it will be mu minus z sigma, or above the mean, in which case it will be mu plus z sigma. And here's a couple of simple examples. Example number one says here that the daily auction price of a certain product is normally distributed with a mean of $25 and standard deviation of $5. And then it says find a price x such that the probability or the likelihood or the area, if you like, that the actual price will lie above it is 0.8. And here's a side note to guide you. It says, note that such a price would have to be on the left side of the mean in order for the area above it, keyword above it, to be 0.8. And why is that? Because remember, total area under the curve is equal to 1. One half of it is 0.5 the other half is 0.5 and one side is a mirror image of the other side. So what this means is the only way that this problem would make sense is if x is on the left side so that if we check off this point right here and shade the region above it, that's the only way we can have 0.8. In other words, it will be this 0.5 here plus a little bit more of 0.3. If you had started without giving this a thought, and for some reason, let me minimize this, and for some reason you move this arrow, you say, well, I think x is actually on the left side. And then as a result, you decided to mark off a point such as this. Say, so, well, let x be right here. And just for fun, I'm going to have to shade that up so that you can see it real clearly. All right? maybe give it a, another red color right here. So if you marked your x to be right here, then the area above it would be this area right here. And as you can see, this area is below 0.5 and certainly below 0.8. So if you had er in error identified your point for that x to be on the right side of the mean, it would not have made sense because the area above it is far less than 0.8. So it definitely and necessarily have to be on the left side of the mean for this argument of 0.8, an area above it, to make sense. So I'm going to hit undo and undo and undo right there. So that's back to where we were. So now, what we're going to do is to find the value of z. So now that we know the area of 0.3, all right, between the mean and this point here, and we already know this to be 0.5, but 
based on this point 3 we can go to the Z table and look up the Z value corresponding to an area of point 3. Let's do that. I minimize and I pull up my Z table right here. So once again I remind you that Z values are on the margin of the Z table. Within the table we have probabilities and you can see that the maximum, the largest probability value is approximately 0.5 which is the total area on one side of the normal curve. So now let's look for 0.3 and you can just, the numbers increase from 0 all the way to 0.5. So just look for 0.3 right here. I see 0.2995 and I see 0.3023. So as you can see Z value would have to be either 0.84 or 0.85. You could also interpolate between these two points and conclude that Z value is about 0.845 and that's what we're going to do. Alright, so let's do that. So with a Z value of approximately 0.845 we plug, we'll, here's our formula again. The mean is given to be 25, standard deviation is given to be 5. Alright, so what we needed was Z. So based on the probability value of 0.3 we find that Z to be 0.845. How do we know we should put a negative here instead of a positive? Well, that's because we are below the mean. This point is below the mean. So when you solve it out, it tells you that that value of x has to be 20.78 approximately. Now, by the way, you can also use uh, a number of web portals to um, figure to find the answer pretty quickly and one of my favorite ones which we have already looked at before is this one right here hyperstat so let's go there and um, identify the uh, uh, the limits of um, uh, find the probability value and then the Z value so to do so we go to uh, this we're going to choose the second one so hopefully the um, the uh, interactive um, protocol for this website would not have changed by the time you get to want to use it. Alright, so but we're going to check the second one right here. It says the value for an area. And we're going to use this to compute Z. Alright, so to find the value for an area would be used to compute Z. Remember, first we find the probability which is value for the area. And with that probability, we, cal we find Z and with that Z we then find X. So now let's see here the area right here is 0.8 so right there type in 0.8 and we want above it so just click recalculate and that's it and the computer knows to give it a negative sign already because it knows that this point right here is below the mean because remember your mean is right here the mean of zero for the standard normal variable that's it. And then you'd plug it in here and again solve it, solve it out. Second problem says the daily auction price of a certain product is normally distributed with a mean of 25 and standard deviation of 5. Alright, so same as before, but this time find a price X such that the probability that the actual price will be, about, will be below it is 0.45. So the probability that the real price will be below it this time is 0.45. So that price has to be here because if it is here, a point below the mean, we find that the area below it can be argued to be 0.45 since the total area on one side is 0.5. And again, if you had made, a, made an error of saying, well, perhaps this x value should be on this side, and so below it would have to be from here going backwards. But as you can see, if you stayed here and thinking that the that the area would have to be from here going backwards which would be below it then you would have been you would have incorporated an area far above 0.5 which is larger than the stipulated area of 0.45 so for this to make sense you do need to be below the mean a point such as this so the next what we're going to do is to find the probability value
and then based on that probability value we find z value now this tiny space right here between our blue shading and the red line that actually is the area that based upon which we're gonna find the value of z this area of 0 0.05 because remember the z table is going to show us probabilities and z values that are based on the distance from the mean to some point above or below so we're gonna go look for area of 0 0.05 so let's do that area of 0 0.05 so within the table we're looking for, we're looking for the area 0 0.05 right about here it's gonna be a Z value of either 0.12 or 0.13 or you could also interpolate and call it 0.125 something like that alright so probabilities um, anything within the ballpark should suffice really alright so with that as you can see right here that's the point 0.125 and again we know it's going to be negative because this point is below the mean so we find that price to be twenty four dollars and about thirty eight cents and once again we can use uh, this website to quickly and easily find the value so let's do that go there and let's reset this okay so again, we want the second argument, the value for a given area, which we're going to use to compute Z. So the area here would be 0.45. All right. With this uh, interactive website, we need not be concerned about whether the area corresponds is uh, the area adjoining the mean and some point above or below it. The uh, algorithm in this program already knows what we want. So. 0.45 and we're looking for the area below it alright so that's that we're looking for the area below that value of X so we're gonna check this below here and click recalculate and already it's given it to us as a negative 0.125 so that's the value of Z which we then um, plug in right here and voila we're done so these are two quick examples of inverse transformation again it simply is a simple process whereby we can find specific values of X given the value of Z and for us to know that value of Z we first of all have to know what the probability is and that's it